quite shocking. Like appealing to the senses, you could hear the screams. Horrible. It's it just make you feel the pain, and yeah, the, just that the pain of I don't know, trying to fight for your life, knowing that you know you're worth, you're a human being, and you're worth something. And as a person who's not been there, you you go into that installation with the imagery and the sound, it just make you leave it, and you're thinking, wow, you know. Well, we only just humans, you know, pretty much. They are given no protective gear of any kind, so they'll be picking cotton in bare hands, usually in their torn clothing, uh, with sometimes nothing more than slippers or sandals on their feet. And this is very, very difficult work. It's, it's, it's backbreaking work. There's no drinking water given to them in many instances, and they resort to drinking right out of irrigation canals, uh, which carries with all kinds of risks for waterborne uh, infections and diseases. Each child is expected to achieve a daily quota. Usually, of course, they have to be paid, but at the end of the harvest, many of them they even remain in debt because the amount of cotton which they collected is not enough to cover expenses of the state for their food and bed. Children are not the only victims of Uzbekistan's system of compulsory labor. Teachers, doctors, and factory workers are forced to leave their jobs and go to work in cotton fields with no additional compensation. Yeah, I did some reading on it beforehand and there are really big restrictions. Journalists can't go into the country, so they just had to get what they could get in terms of images. They couldn't get anything else, really. I was surprised they could even do the um, video. So I assume most of that will have been done undercover. They're fighting to have independent people go in and assess human rights in the country at the moment. Uzbekistan.